Welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm the best-selling author of The Boss Weight Loss. I'm bringing you the top tips to be unstoppable. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to actually pull up a chair with today's top experts in mindset, weight loss, business, and more. Learn our top tips so that you can have more energy, be fit and resilient, feel unstoppable, unshakable, and unbreakable. Of the How We Solve podcast and show, which is the umbrella company for his portfolio of businesses, LTV Plus, Task Drive, Shortlist. He's also the founding CEO of UpCoach CDM, content delivery management and CRM platform for coaches and organization. David Hensel, welcome. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Um, so nice to meet you and get some really good podcasting microphone tips off camera. So thank you for that. <laughs> and I love everything that you're up to in the world with habit tracking. So let's jump right into the content. And obviously everything boils down to the habits that you cultivate. Yes, I'm a, I'm a big believer that habits determine everything in your life. If you're rich or poor, or happy or unhappy, or obese or in shape, it all boils down to which habits you cultivate. You know, kind of see it like, like a garden that you have to take care of. You have to pull out the weeds and you have to water the, the stuff that you want there. And right. so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge habit nerd. So tell us a little bit about um, your habit tracking and your community and how you help people. Yeah, so... Um, I let me see where I, where I start. So let's say nine years ago, I um, my wife was going through breast cancer, and knock on wood, oh, she's doing great God. today. But this was like a big wake up moment for me, where I envisioned myself on my deathbed, looking back at my life, thinking, did I really do what I was supposed to do? Did I have the impact I want to have? And so yeah, it was a big wake up moment for me, and I thought, like, what can I do to have more impact? And wow, um, I. <coughs> excuse me i sold my business um and you know went on the hunt like you know what is it that, that i can do to have more impact then um one idea was to create a program that my wife and i figured out if, that if you apply business principles to family life everything becomes much easier you know kind of creating like, like a family systematizing mission. things like in your yes. family life as yes, well correct. as the same way you would a business correct Correct. You know, having like family core values, personal mission statements, regular meetings, shared calendar, like all the stuff you do in business, just like for your family. And um, I initially created a course, an online course for that. And um, the uh, the problem was that a lot of people bought it, but only 7% of them actually completed it. You know, it's like right. the, the problem online with online courses. courses. This happens. Yeah. And, you know, this was like really bothering me. So I wanted to figure out a way like how to actually get this information to people's heads because I was, I didn't want to make money with this, you know, I mean, money is fine as a side effect of providing value, but I want people to actually get the benefits from this. And so I thought, how can I do this? And then I developed a, um, a platform. I actually started to do group coaching, you know, it's like do cohorts of eight people where, you know, I walk them through the, the same content, like eight week course. And this had a we have a 92 percent completion rate on this one you know kind of completely wow. reversed the that's the, huge it differential the because i know we all have the best intentions sometimes when we buy a digital course and then we need the next one and the next one and for me i know as an online entrepreneur it's kind of a compulsion so i love the way that you problem solve like how do you get people actually tracking their habits and utilizing your platform so that they don't just have those good intentions and then slack off yeah yeah so um i started to build this software that helps me to run these group cohorts better and to create positive peer pressure like accountability you know like it's called upcoach.com and yeah actually my, my program is called managing happiness where i help people to figure out their personal mission vision and values their the goals that they have in life and the habits that they need to achieve those goals and um so we um, built this tool for that, that, you know, you have this positive peer pressure where you have a, a group habit tracker where you see where you can track your habits, but you also see all the other participants of this group coaching, 
how they're doing with their habits. You see how they're doing with their to-dos. You know, do they complete their stuff or not? They like, do they fill out their worksheets and what do they put in their worksheets? So it's like this complete transparency, and this tremendously helped with um, the results. You know, because wow. we're social animals and we don't want to be the one who's not pulling their weight. You know, we you don't want to be the one who's not doing their homework. You know, it's like it's. Um, it's the good element of, of peer pressure, you know. Kind yeah, of a little bull- competition, a little friendly competition. And I yes. really wanted to talk to you today about managing happiness because I feel like we are obviously in a mental health crisis and physical health crisis. And do you have any tips for our audience about how can they manage happiness the way they would manage mm-hmm. a team or a job? Yeah, um, I would start with habits, you know, kind of cultivating healthy habits that you need. And um, I can maybe go through the list of the habits that I need to be on my personal A-game. Yeah, like, what do you got? Yeah, so it's um, I have like three categories. Like one is business, one is family, and one is mind and body. And in the business category for me, it's very important to plan the next day because, you know, if I... You know, to feel good, I need to be productive. You know, if, right. otherwise if I'm not productive, I, I don't feel good. So I always like... Um, at the end of the day, I put on a list of stuff that I want to do the next day. And then another thing is I circle the frog. I don't know if you know the concept of eating the frog. The idea is that you always do the task that you least likely want to do. You do it first because it gives you a lot of energy versus if you don't do it, if you procrastinate, this frog becomes bigger in, in the back of your mind, takes away your, your mental resources. And yeah, it's just, you know, you, you all know, like as a kid, you start cleaning up your room to avoid doing your homework, you know, and it's like, Oh yeah. I'm uh, like that. Like I have something looming over my head. I'm like, now's a good time to just clean the closet, clean off the desk and really get organized. No. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I like to rub off the bandaid and, you know, eat the frog cause this gives you a lot of energy once you have this thing behind you. And then you say, okay, let's, let's crush so the eat other the stuff. Frog, do the least desirable yes. task pl- first. Correct. So pl- plan the day, um, eat the frog and then, I have another thing is um, inbox zero. The idea is that at the end of the day, you always have like archived, delegated or completed all the emails that you have. So there's nothing in the inbox. And if I'm not doing this, it gives me a lot of anxiety because I know there's like still stuff that I have to do. So, and this is also the canary in the coal mine for me. You know, the analogy of the canary in the coal mine. I know the song where that came from. So please go over it. So the, the idea is like in coal mines, people always took down a canary in a, in a cage. Because, you know, when there's like no oxygen or some gases being released, then, you know, people just like drop that or like drop unconscious and then they die. But the canary drops that first, you know, it's like, oh, a, like a warning yeah. signal, you know, yeah. or becomes unconscious, just not necessarily dies, you know, but it's an early warning signal. And if I'm not doing my inbox zero for uh, over a week in a row, I know I have too much on my plate and I have to kind of rearrange something, you know, it's like this early warning thing to, to show me that I'm overworked. Right. So. so that removes stress. <coughs> you don't feel the pressure of like how like those five thousand seven hundred emails I have in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like it, it, maybe you can like do inbox bankruptcy and just like archive everything and then kind of start fresh. You know, it's like that's that's one way of of getting started. I love these tips. And another tip is like once you fall off the wagon, like once I, you know, I'm. I'm not doing my habits anymore because I got overwhelmed, you know, and then often people, you know, it's really hard for people to, people to get back into the, the good habits, right? Um, once you're in, in the routine, like going to a gym six times a week, then you just go. It's like in the morning, you just like get up and go. But once you're out of it, it's, it's really hard to start. And my hack for this is I have a restart routine, basically. Uh, it's, it's like I do a self-care day where, you know, I go get a massage, get a haircut, get, you know, get a shave, maybe manicure, pedicure, whatever, buy, buy myself some stuff for, for myself. And after this, I say, okay, from tomorrow on, you're in good behavior again. This kind of gives me this kick of like, you know, okay, let's freaking reset. do this and let's get, let's, let's get get back into it. So reset routine is really big to help yourself to get back into the um, good habits. <clears throat> then I family to talk to you about this. I mean, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I was just thinking, you know, right now we all need a reset. That's why we're here. So what else do you have in your toolbox that you're willing to share? In terms of resets, I think like the, the, the reset routine kind of really write down the stuff that is self care for you, you know, and I think like doing something for you or whatever you enjoy that you usually don't do, um, you know, is, is, is a good thing. And then, for me, this gives me the energy to say, okay, from tomorrow on, 
good behavior again. Let's start pushing again. Let's stick to our good routines again. You know, get up early in the morning, go to the gym, etc. You know, kind of like pick up the, the good habits. Oh, I love that. In terms of family, the habits, it's mainly like for me spending quality time with my wife and my daughter. Um, it's kind of sad that I have to put this in there, but I'm like very work focused. And so I tend to forget and I just want to be mindful of it. And this, this helps me to be, be on my A game as, as a father as well. Right. I don't think it's sad. I think it, it's great. Yeah. I mean, like ideally you do this just like by being wired that way, but I'm not wired that way. So, you know, I, I know this about, I figured this out about myself and it's like a crutch that helps me to you know, be, be a good father and, and, and husband, you know. Um, then for mind and body, yoga and meditation, I do it every morning. I follow the routine from innerengineering.com, Satguru. It's like a really cool yoga routine that I learned there. It's Upa Yoga and, and some Kriya meditation stuff. And uh, it's, yeah, what is it, it, called it helped. Innerengineering.com oh, by I Satguru. Oh, Innerengineering.com, very mm -hmm. cool. It's really cool. Um, then I work out minimum three times a week, but preferably six times a week. Cause you know, I think I just, you know, we have to sweat every day to, to feel good. And when I go for a run, I kind of like really clean up a lot of stuff in my, my head. And back in the days, I even felt bad going to the gym cause I felt like, oh, I could be in the office working, but doing this actually makes you, it's, you know, you're a lot more productive if you have to take this time to clean up your your mind then um, I, I agree I think it's... the self-care is a, a absolute must and the exercise and the meditation anything else while we're on that one topic of your buckets of um yeah of, of mind and body yeah there, there's more so v visualization and gratitude i have like this gratitude exercise where i pick up a gratitude rock and go through the things i'm grateful for you know kind of puts me to an all as well state of mind and throughout the day i have the stone in my pocket and this you know, sometimes I'm, I'm stressed and I feel the stone just brings me back to like, dude, actually everything is like wonderful, you know, because we, f we tend to focus on the bad things, but forgetting the, all this beauty that we have in our lives, you know, and we just, you know, we're kind of wired to just like only look at the bad stuff, but yeah, we tend to forget how, so, how awesome life actually is. So you know? how do you remind yourself of the gratitude? So I have this rock that I pick up every morning, just like, you know, and just kind of go through the things I'm grateful for when I pick it up with my wallet and my, my keys and stuff like this. And then it's in my pocket and, you know, sometimes I feel it, which reminds you of like, hey, actually everything's amazing. And at the end of the day, I take out the rock and I go through the things that went great this day, you know, it's like, you know, because sometimes you have a very productive day and at 5 p.m. you have an unpleasant conversation with your spouse, a business partner, a customer, or whatever, and you think like everything sucks, but it does not. There was still so much good stuff, you know, kind of like by being in this mindset of always focusing on the positive, it really strengthens your gratitude muscle and your resilience to just like plow through whatever comes your way. Gratitude hmm. rock. I love that. It's really impactful. It's simple, but um, very impactful. Another thing I'm doing is the Maui habit, which comes from a book called Tiny Habits. Um, and the idea is that every morning when you get up, you tell yourself today's going to be an amazing day. It sounds silly, but it's really impactful. If you just like do this every morning, you know, today is going to be freaking amazing. It just like change your outlook for, for the day. And um, yeah, so this is like the, sh the, the quick version of my habits. The positive psychology is so important these days of just the positive self-talk instead of all this, like shoulda, woulda, coulda. And I really learned so much from you. And I really learned how you don't realize that by having a cluttered inbox, that it's creating clutter in your mind and stress. Lots of anxiety because there's stuff like, oh, there's, oh, I have to remind, think of this and blah, you know, like it's like all these um, things. Actually, and another thing that really helped me is I have like this little notebook that I always carry with me. And, you know, this is also where I write down the, what I have to do for the day, for the month, etc. And um, whenever I have an idea, I just like take a note and write it down here. So it's like out of my head. And then I also can sleep much better because I have an idea. Otherwise, you know, oh yeah, tomorrow I have to do this. I can't forget this and blah, blah. But just like get it out of your head, put it in, onto, you know, a notepad, a piece of paper. And then it helped me, helped me to just sleep better and be more relaxed because I know I will not forget it. Oh, because yeah. I also think like A players 
don't forget stuff. You know, I never want to be in the, in the position to like, oopsie, oh no, I forgot this. Like, screw that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to deliberately not do things like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'll just like drop this deliberately. But I never want to be in a position to like, oh damn, no, I forgot about this. Like, that's, I think that's not, not, not an option in my world. So you hold yourself to a higher standard of doing the things that you committed to doing and that are important to you. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's, it's super important also for your self worth, you know, that you like, that you do the stuff that you say you do, you know, I think it's, it's really important for, for yeah, how you feel about yourself. I love that. And I really love that saying how you do one thing is how you do anything. How does that apply to your happiness tracking and, and your whole business here? It applies to everything. I think it's, it's such an important thing, like how we do one thing, how we do everything. It's like also how I judge people's characters. You know, if they're, if you're like an app to the waiter, you're also going to be an app to oh, you know, somebody that. else. You know, so, you know, so it's like, be very, I'm very analytical by observing how people act do, you know, with, with the little things. This is a cool story by, um, um, Zappos, the company, yes. um, they have like this, um, when somebody's being hired in a higher position, you know, um, they, they interview with everybody. So, so they, they fly in, they, somebody brings them from the airport to the headquarter, then they meet a bunch of people. And then if everybody says, yes, we want to hire this person. Last thing is they ask the driver, if this guy was nice to the driver, if he wasn't nice to the driver, they're not going to hire him. Yeah, you know, so it's like a kind of thing. That's like, um, so important to me, like how you treat everybody. I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, we're all humans. And if somebody doesn't have compassion and empathy, that's a actually, good teller. Actually, I, it's a funny thing about me. I've just found out I have a condition called aphantasia, which okay. um, I cannot produce images in my head. So in my mind, it's always black. You know, when I close my eyes, think of an apple, it's, it's black. Wow. And, and I also cannot relive emotions and I cannot relive sense, taste, smells. So it's basically so always a very in the, then in the moment, um, then you're not I'm always, like always dwelling very in the present. Past? No, I, I can't, you know, I, I like everything in the past is like, it's text-based, you know, like when my father passed, when I was 12, I was like, okay, this is nobody's fault. It's nothing I can do with this. What is, and I just moved on, Wow. you know? And so. It has, it has a lot of positive aspects, but it has a negative aspect, which is I have a logical empathy. I deeply care about people. But if you tell me you're going through a tough time, you know, I'm, I used to just like, okay, but you can do this and this and this, and then it's going to be better. But I'd never say like, oh, you know, it must feel so tough for you and blah. I, I never, or like kind of just facial expression of like suffering with you. I cannot do this. You know, now I'm kind of faking it to some degree to make people not feel weird or like people not think that I don't care about them because I, I deeply care about people. Right. But yeah, this is something that I just learned to, to do, you know, so I, I have logical empathy, but, but I don't have emotional That's empathy. That's fascinating to me because it's such a gift in some ways, but it's good that you're so introspective that you figured it out and and you can have logical empathy and i didn't, never even realized the distinction but of course there's a distinction and and you want to empathize for people but you don't want to have people that are victims just going on and on and on. this happened to me rather than the logical side of you would be probably like well let's fix it oh yeah i mean and with the I'm really big on only focusing on things I can impact because otherwise you're in the victim position. That's why I, I don't watch any news, you know, like because there's just your negative stuff and you can't really do anything about this. Right. You know, so very deliberate of like, if I can't impact it, I don't care about it. You know, even if it's bad, good, whatever. Like I can't do anything about it. I pick my battles and I just want to, you know, like focus my energy on things I can impact and then I can do a lot of good. And, you know, I can't be worrying about everything, you know, just have that much resource and time and focus to... Um, yeah, I guess focus is also like an important thing. Like if you have a magnifying glass and you can kind of burn a hole into the table, but if you, you know, if you hold it still and if you focus, you can burn a hole, but if you move it around, you won't even warm up the, f the surface, you know? So I think it's really important to just like focus on the stuff that matters. Um, this is also, why I'm such a nerd when it comes to figuring out your personal mission and vision and core values to, you know, really focus on the stuff that is, that it's important to you personally and not living the dream of the world, you know, kind of like keeping up with the Joneses, etc. kind of like it's most people don't really know 
what they what really makes them happy so i think that's also like a really important thing to really f be introspective and figure out like what m really matters to you what really makes you happy not what makes your f your parents happy or your society or whatever and kind of what's what's the thing that that matters to you and um figuring this out i think it's a crucial puzzle piece to figuring out true happiness I love that because once you figure out what really makes you happy, I hope you guys are taking notes because this stuff is super valuable from an absolute happiness expert here. It's just like once you figure those things out, then you can delegate the stuff that is soul crushing once you feel like, well, this makes me happy, but doing the laundry, not so much. Yeah, I mean, yes, absolutely. And, you know, I have um, I have a portfolio of businesses I have um a lot of people working for me and i think a good manager always manages himself out of any task you know at some point you don't have to do anything anymore because you kind of found somebody who does everything for you and cutting out the stuff that doesn't make you happy where you don't thrive in you know, just like find somebody else who does it you know it's... so stay in your zone of genius and the last topic i had it's... for you is also too about love and fear because i know you're saying you're not watching the news and, and i think that there's so much fear mongering that's happened in the last couple of years not going down a rabbit hole obviously but how do you operate from love versus fear and how can fear. you tell our audience how to do so too so let me tell you how i came, how i learned about the love and fear concept and I'm a recovering introvert. I used to be very introverted, which was holding me back tremendously in business and in life. And I decided to change that. So I, I did Toastmasters, which is like public speaking courses. I did, um, yeah. I see. And, and I did like two Toastmasters classes per week. And I went to two networking events in Los Angeles and, you know, just to ex exposure therapy style, overcome my shyness, right? Right. And it worked. <coughs> I got much better at it. But um, the real switch in my head happened when my yoga teacher said every decision in life you either make it out of love or out of fear these are the basic emotions why you do everything right and if you do it out of love you're on the right path if you do it out of fear you're on the wrong path and this was something i always knew but i could not articulate and have you know since she gave me that mantra i applied it to to everything for example in sales i used to hate sales with a passion because i always felt like a used car salesman shoving something down somebody else's throat and you know, so I, I never could sell. But if I sell out of love, if I sell because I know the product that I have can help you in your life, in your business, I can even be pushy, say like, Lisa, freaking buy this. It's going to be amazing for you. And you'll feel where I'm coming from because, you know, you feel that I, I, I deeply care about you, right? And, and having yeah. you succeed versus if I sell out of fear and I only sell because I have to pay my mortgage and I have to reach my sales numbers, I can't sell for the life of me. And you'll also feel where I'm coming from and you'll right. less likely buy, right? So... Or public speaking, you know, I used to hate public speaking or being on a podcast. I would have never oh, been, I right? It. I would, have, and you know, if I speak out of fear and I think like, oh, do they think I look weird? Do they think I have a weird German accent? Do they think what I'm saying is stupid? I can't perform. I can't do that, you know, because it's about me. It's not about the other people. And if I think about the others and I act out of love, I think what I have to share here can help them in their life and their business. I can flow and I can present and it's very easy, you know, so it's, uh, um, and I could go on and on about different um, examples for this, but if you manage to do everything in life out of love, you know, everything will just flow, you're in a state of flow and good things will happen. That's so helpful. I know it's helped me when I've tried to get over my fears of public speaking that I've had my whole life and just, I make myself go to Toastmasters and I made myself do DVD. But I made my best friend be in it with me because I was petrified. And when I make it about other people and the message that I have to share, then I get over myself and then I try to convert that nervousness of energy into excitement. Excitement, yes. It's a, pretty much the same same um, emotion, right? Yeah, because I have the same thing. I <clears throat> so that's so helpful. I love all this stuff. And... Um, where can people find you? I want everybody to know about your community. So you can find me under hensel.com, which is my, my personal blog. And there's also a list of all my um, my companies. You can go to howwesolve.com. That's our podcast where we help people solve business problems. Um, 
or you know upcoach.com is my coaching platform task i mean i have like yeah check out howwesolve.com and hence.com and you're going to find all the other um uh, platforms and i'm off of course i'm on all the social media platforms linkedin facebook twitter just search for my name and you'll find me and if david you uh, yes david hensel if you connect with me please say that you heard me on lisa's podcasts you know because i get a lot of connection requests and if there's like no context i will not accept it but if you you know um mention that you come from lisa then i'm happy to chat thanks david thank you lisa thank you for having me thanks for coming a whole ceo of lisa g after over 20 years helping people lose weight and get fit i'm so excited to announce that i found the missing link with my coaching message me if you want to learn how to look better feel better and go faster with a master Lisa G at lisagfit.com. <laughs>